this world, there are things that people mustn't touch. Who cares? Hey there guys, and welcome back to Let's Play um, Batan Kaitos. Eternal Skies, or Eternal Wings, and Endless, or, god damn it, Eternal Wings and Lost Ocean. I got it right last time, I know what it is, I just can't freaking say it. So last time we got a letter from the physician that we woke up with. Well, okay, now well, that sounds bad. The physician that was there when we first awoke, at the very beginning of the game. Um, and I want to say, if I remember correctly, and I'll be the first to admit, you know, I've uh, been playing this game for a long time, but there are, we also found out that that physician has some connection with to our dad. Because whenever we were investigating him, they talked about how George and Fercad, is that his name right, Fercad? Um, had been in the Empire and they both left. So. It's Wazen, right? I do believe it is. I thought I had the little like, red arrow there that's like, hey, you're going this way. No, it is not. We are not going to Wazen. Just getting there, Dargan. Just getting there. <coughs> uh, excuse me, guys. Forgot about that place. I thought it was the one, like, slightly below it. I don't seem to be able to go to that island. But I think this is the City of Clouds, isn't it? Oh, I can't remember if this is where I want to be or not. Because you, you start off in a village, and then you have to eventually get to a port. And I can't remember if this is the first island or the second island. I think this might be it. Man, it has been bloody forever. I do think this is right, though, because I think you go through the Nunkai Valley and then it's right here. Yes, Silvari, yep, this is indeed where we want to be. I am smart. Hello there, animal. I'm not doing the animal quest, but I'm going to take you anyway. I mean, yeah, let's take it. I don't know that I'll ever actually give it up, but hey. Pranza. He who does the prancing. Well, give me a duck. was the best duckling of the flock. There's no question about that. <laughs> so this is private business. We waiting out here. Oh, I'm sure this is private business. I thought that's it. I'm sure this is a private business. Like, oh, I'm Gabar. I can't go into any private shops. I can only go into, you know, state-run shops. Thanks. Shouldn't take long. Aha, you've come. Well, I've been waiting for you, Carlos. Things must have been pretty awful for you, but I'm glad to see you're in good health. Thanks, Doc. Long time no see. I got your letter, so you got something to tell me? And what? Here's my question. What's been happening in Subtle Sawad that has got the doctor suddenly wanting to tell Carlos something that he apparently knew back when Carlos first woke up but wouldn't tell him? You know, I, I get that we're reaching the climax of the game, but what is going on from the doctor's perspective that made now suddenly the time? We you really working with Gramps and for the Empire? Now then, where should I start? Huh, from the very beginning, I suppose. 
the experiment we were working on. It's been almost 20 years. I heard you've been to the Empire, so you probably heard about us. George and I were... Is it George or Yorg? Yorg and I were born in a small desert village. We were recruited by the Empire around 20 years ago. Been working on military research. What am I looking at here? Is Are those people, or is that like the outline of a landmass? I think those are people. Under Emperor Gullablame's orders, we were supposed to design new weaponry, battleships, iron beetles. But there was another project we were assigned to, one that was kept strictly confidential. We were attempting to solve the secret of the Magnus. The End Magnus? What you know today as the Magna Essence is technology originally established ages ago by the warlocks of old. It consists of encoding and storing the essence of matter. Decoding it later to restore the material to its original form. You see, why can't my warlock in World of Warcraft do that? My World of Warcraft... Ah! All I can do is like, throw freaking shadow bolts. Yet, it was said to be impossible to encode a living creature to a Magnus. It was quite some time ago. This type of research has been strictly prohibited. Creatures cast into the Magnus would end up distorted and defective when later invoked. But Yorg had succeeded. He was a true genius. So, does that mean that um, part of the reason that the like the various components of um, oh the Malpersio, that's his name, Malpersio are so twisted and weird is because they put him to the end Magnus? Was he really just an evil god, but a normal-looking evil god, and now he's just an abomination and a deformity? At first, we planned to make use of the power sealed deep within the lava caves. That turned out to be one of the sealed in Magnus. Giacomo, Ayame, and Falan were the result of those initial experiments. Wait, what? You put them into a Magnus and then spit them back out? That's why all three have extraordinary powers. I wouldn't actually say that extraordinary, honestly. I mean, they're roughly the equivalent to one of my guys. When I, when I fought three on three, I beat them. And my guys didn't have any weird Magnus experiments, did we? I mean, like, I might have, but I, I can't imagine it happening to everyone on my party. So, Giko and his goons have gotten some powers from the end Magnus. That's right. With the hidden Magnus sealed away, that was the best we could do. So he took it to another level. You know what I'm talking about? Can't you remember? This is about you and your brother, Fee. Callus, you were created you artificially. I'm a robot? That may be... Uh, I did think Callus was awfully, like, kind of cold towards others. That may be a result of the fact that he's not really human. He doesn't he doesn't necessarily have empathy. In fact, it could even be that my role in this and the reason that I was... You know, York went out and found me and put me with Callus is so that I, he would have, like, a moral compass because he didn't have one naturally. That's interesting. I... Over the years, I have numerous experience under close watch of the Empire. What kind of experiment would cause you to make a false person? But even Yorg couldn't conceive in including a living creature. Something very important, not found as a mere object, would be lost when the creature was encoded. And it would be missing when the creature was reconstructed. It was then that Yorg altered his approach yet again. Instead of encoding, extracting back the essence, he been working on modifying an existing working magnet to create a living creature. So what Magnus did Callus come from? A dark sword? Yorg seemed totally engrossed in his work back then. He chose a base material and spent months modifying and improving it, slowly altering the Magnus' properties. The experiment was successful. Several months later, a new life was created. You were the result, Callus. I do like how they had the, like, Background music stopped just abruptly right then. Even though they'd already kind of told it, so it wasn't really a oh my god moment. That. That's impossible. 
I know this is difficult to believe, but you'll understand someday. Born from a Magnus, you were, how should I put it, excessively human. That does not make any sense. <laughs> because you're not human, you're exceedingly human. What? You had too many of the flaws present in human beings, and you were born with just one wing. The Leblanc was unsatisfied with the result of that experiment. What he wanted was pure, perfect life form. Centennial was to study the Magnus of such a life form and unlock the secret of eternal life. He would call this hypothetical life form the Divine Child. Is that what he tried to make with Malpersio and then he got exploded? The Divine Child. Since around that time, Gilleblame became obsessed with overcoming the limitations of human beings. You worked further as a study based on your Magnus, making improvements. Uh, sorry guys. Making improvements until several years later, another life was born. A child born of a true living Magnus. Fee? So you're trying to tell me Fee? He was created too? But Codette, one of the witches, says she didn't feel any Magnus within me. Your Magnus is quite different from those found in this world. York had drastically modified the original Magnus. Suppose you brought in a creature with blue blood instead of red, and asked someone to study its blood. You would shake their heads and say it's not possible, this creature has no blood at all. When people think of blood, they picture a red liquid. Blue liquid would simply not f fit their preconceived ideas. And that's how, um... It, it's really hard to get rid of your assumptions, but it is... People are so, so held back... The scientific method is all about making a hypothesis and testing it, but people don't test their assumptions, hardly at all. They would need someone to point out to them it's simply a matter of the creature's blood being blue. Until then, they would picture the creature as being bloodless. I'm not sure that's true. I know back whenever I was playing, like, you know, games on the, you know, um, N64 and such, and you would, in things would have, like, green blood because it would get around the sensors... Um, I, we, we would say, oh, they've got green blood. We wouldn't say, when you attack reptile, no blood comes out. Mortal Kombat reference. For anyone that doesn't know, who is a reptile? A similar thing could be said about your Magnus. Well, I think I get what you're trying to say. Wow, he's coming to accept it really quick. <laughs> Back to the original subject. After Fee was born, York was a man redeemed. Time he spent with you and Fee may have stirred something within him that had been dormant for a long time. Or maybe there was something about Fee that brought about these changes in him. Eventually, twelve years ago, when you decided to separate from the Empire. And by separate, I mean escape. So that's... I think we've seen him before, but I hadn't remembered that he was so, like, pink-haired. I'm old man pink hair. But that's not my voice. <laughs> Tell me, Laracouche, what on earth have we done? We succeeded in creating life from a Magnus, but for what purpose? Is it worth anything at all? We merely open a door leading to further sorrow and despair. Yorg, we have other things to think about right now. We need to make a decision. Draw all, we're with our parents. It's our responsibility to do the right thing and protect them. Right. You're absolutely right. What do you want to do? Follow up with orders and continue research? No. We must put an end to this. Callus and Fee can no longer be, be victims of vile abominations. I understand. There's only one thing we can do then. Yes. This way is lab with explosives so that no records or samples can be recovered. Nothing shall remain. We'll fit our deaths in the explosion and leave the Empire in secret. Okay, that's why everyone thought he died. Except, obviously, um, you know, he went to the new country and people... Well, did people know him there? Because that's the big question. Because 20 years later, I just end up wandering into the town where Laracouche is. So what happened to me? We should head for Mira. We know that Fee was killed by Gilliblame. That island is close to the dimensional boundary, but it periodically shifts between dimensions. If they find out we set up the explosion, being a mirror should buy us some time. Four of us will live in peace. You, I, Callus, and Fee. In case you forgot which four I was referring to. 
I, I do not want to bring Gellar Blame with us. He is not one of the four. Shh, someone's coming. I, I came to confirm tomorrow's schedule for the Holomation experiments. How is your analysis of the Magnus coming along? No problem. It's going exactly as planned. We need to account for fluctuations related to his growth patterns. We need more time to be sure. I've told you this repeatedly. <laughs> so you need more time. How much? Five more years? Ten? At your current rate, it may well take forever. We need results, not excuses. Ember's patience has its limits. Also, you have orders to dispose of the defective sample tomorrow. It's no longer of any use to us. No need to keep it alive. I do have to wonder if there's no relation with me, because I said, they said Giacomo was my dad, and then York was my grandpa, but I was artificially created, do they mean that the Magnus I started from was Giacomo's? Because I do notice people with have blue hair. Giacomo, how could you? Zor, don't. Ugh. Giacomo, let me ask you, this experiment we are working on, the Emperor's plans, don't they bother you at all? <laughs> you of all people should you of all people should know better. I'm not like you or my father. It's your experiments and I will a power no mundane human could ever hope for. Besides, you started all this in the first place. Now is not the time for regrets or second guessing. You will continue the experiment. I will see to that, I assure you. I myself can hardly wait. What does this project will show us? Where it will lead us? There's so much to look forward to. Don't focus on the past. <laughs> Emperor, the laboratory's in flames. I have a painted face. I want you to be a prostitute. I'm sorry, every time I see his vo his face, I always just have to snicker a little bit. Everything went as planned. We managed to reach Mira under the guise of travelers. Oh, that's right, because we, we also do know I grew up in Mira, because uh, the girl there knew me. Maybe it was from the shock of the explosion. We were all got the Empire. You'd lost memory of everything that had happened until then. If he was only three years old, so he didn't seem to remember much either. Soon after I left Mira and came to live here. I don't know exactly what happened to you and Mira two years ago. You organized plan had lived separate lives. And how surprised I was when seeing you brought to the village. It's a birdie! Giacomo died. In the Imperial Capital. Is that so? So, I was born of a Magnus. You were created me? I, I can't believe that! I'm not surprised. Take your time, boy. Let us sink in. Either way, you are yourself. That's what counts. Don't let your past define you. How you were born is unimportant. I like this twist, but I do have to say it it, it does remind me of how much better Tells the Abyss handled a kind of similar twist. I won't get into a lot of detail, but they revealed it really, really early in the game and then had the realization take place during the game, which made the characterization work a lot better. Um, this seems to be sort of like, a, oh, we're getting towards the end of the game. Let's reveal all of the things you haven't told you. Woo! Which is... Oh, you can still empathize with Callus for it, but it would be more interesting to watch it play out over time than what it's got. It's going to. It's, I can almost tell it's going to feel rushed. It's the same for anybody. We don't choose to be born. We simply realize one day that we're here, that we exist. I have something for you. York asked me to give it to you, should you need it one day. This must be the time. Gramps left me something? Yes, way back then. When we had settled down in Mira, Yorg told me he intended to leave something for you. 
I don't know what it is, but you'll find it in a cabin in the Celestial Apps. Oh, god damn it! The Celestial Alps? Fetch quest! <laughs> yes, there's a cabin near the mountaintop. York and I built it after we left the Empire. A uh, cabin in the Alps? He stashed it there, huh? Yes. I suggest you go there and look for it. Why do I feel a bit queasy? I know it's not my body. Uh, a body like mine anymore. Wow. A wheel already in motion cannot easily be stopped. Especially a wheel of this magnitude. Your job is to decide on which path to steer it. No one else can make the choice now. The fate of the world rests with you. Good luck, my son. Yeah, he didn't say my son, but damn it, I made him say my son. I am taking editorial control. Doc, I need to ask you one last thing. Who? Give me my name. The Emperor. Galablame. Hearing you were not the perfect being he had envisioned, he called you an ill omen, a cursed premonition of things to come. He named you Callus, which means raven in a long lost language. I see. After we left the Empire, York and I tried to give you a new name, but you would have none of it. Your name was the one thing you remembered. I guess it was the reason for my existence, and my hatred. Something I just couldn't get rid of. This is, this was a really kind of set back -y episode, though. I certainly had no clue that Callus was not a real person. Although it does make sense, some of the things that have happened, you know, do seem born from a complete lack of empathy. And he did ask me a whole lot, what do I want to do, what do I think? Um, more than I think a normal person would. A nor I, mean, I think you'd have a like, spiritual companion, but you wouldn't necessarily constantly consult them for guides. Kellen, are you okay? I'm fine. Would you come with me to the Celestial Alps? The docs at Gramps left me something there. My theme is playing. It's gonna be okay. No problem. I don't know what we're up we're on between you and the duck, but cheer up, kid. Yes, we have so much left to do. We need you in high spirits. <laughs> up to your chair, Callus. The great Mazuti will be with you. Focus your thoughts slowly on the mission. You'll have plenty of time for reflection once it's over. Survival is priority one, right? Thanks, all of you. It's not over yet, Callus. Yeah, you're right, Damiel. Let's go, everyone. Where were you guys during the cutscene? You definitely were not here. Don't be like, oh, well, you were totally here. You weren't here. Just want to be alone and have an awesome, like, cutscene. I do have to admit, my theme would look really, really, st or sound really, really stupid if there were a lot of quacking going on in the background the whole time. Da, 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 wah, ah, da, wah. To the Where are the Celestial Alps? I don't even know that. But if they built it, it's got to be either in the Empire or in Mira. Oh, I guess, I guess I have to go into the city, huh? I'm all, like, smashing my face into the side of the city. You clap, buddy. So it'll come eventually. Onward to glory, graceful alterations. I don't know why I'm singing that, but I am. Why is no one freaked out that there's a flippin' dragon just hanging? Oh, okay. That's the place I couldn't go to before. Just hanging out in their city. Yeah, you would think people would be a little bit more concerned that there's a bloody dragon there. Well, 
there's a treasure box. Treasure box. I got tender box. Celestial Alps. You get away from me. You're creepy. Canis Miner. Anything hidden back here? Because I can't help but notice that this is the direction I could not go by going up. Okay, I can't go that way. I like this background music. I feel like the composer is letting me know that we're getting towards the end. Huh? What's that noise? It's an awesome background theme! It's a bug? What, what was that? What? I have to go smash a critter? Get out of my way! Be careful, everyone. Stupid bug! Oh my gosh, she's still on fire! Guys, she's still on fire! Oh, I kind of thought that thing would die. It did not. Well, these guys have hit points. These guys definitely have hit points. in darkness, fool. Distorting wind. Oh, well, I guess I use a chrono attack too. Whoops. That should really well kill it. There's nothing I really do, because I can't use my dark attack after I just use light flare. Freezing axe. Excellent. There's only one left. I hate leading with dark and then going straight to light, but I didn't really have a choice there. What do I have a pass in here? Rain, come forth and take form of a blade. Sword style. I still like uh, Winter Blade better than Water Blade. Heal yourself up. For you. For you. Heal yourself up.
Ow. Not bad. He just exploded on my face. That is super rude. I wouldn't have exploded on his face. I have not too many of those. That just seems very annoying. There's gonna be a lot of these. Son of a Toog. Why are they doing this? What is the point? Be careful, everyone. Get out of my way! No light has been used, so I can use darkness. Okay, I don't care about wind all that much. God dang it. Oh, that killed him. I'm kind of impressed and surprised. I'm not upset though. Yes, Kitty, we all hear you. We are very glad that you could meow. That is a good trait for you to have. Get ready to be licked. Man, Callus is just knocking out all kinds of awesome attacks. Demons of darkness. I think he's just about to die. I think they have a thousand hit points. Nope, damn it. Oh, damn it, I thought I was warm from the end. Callus has no healing, because Callus is a jerk. <laughs> I threw a picture at you! Go ahead and keep my, keep, keep my defenses up. For you. Or I have a pass in my deck. I'd really have to do something about that. Here we go. I love that animation. That animation is awesome.
Now kindly get out of the way so I can get to my cabin. Let's keep going. Well, of course I want to keep going. Is that even a question? Because that's the this isn't even really a puzzle. This is a oh here's a guy you have to go kill him. Oh here's another guy you have to go kill him too. Okay, I mean I can do that. Can I not read the sign? I guess I can't read the sign. Not allowed. Yeah, I kind of figured there'd be something. Cogs on it. Unfortunately, I think that's going to have to do it for this episode. Because I am already over time. And, like, part of me doesn't. Part of me wants to cut these battles out, but then part of me is also like, you know, these battles are. They're required battles, so they're not just, like, random encounters. So, I will end it here. Next time we kill this guy and get to the cabin, hopefully. That's really my intention. Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. I will see you then.